Welcome to the third part of this tutorial series where we're creating a top-down zombie shooter in JavaScript. And in this video, we're going to be adding movement to our player. So let's get started. So to get started, we're going to go back, right back to our code as usual. And the first thing we want to do is add some movement variables. So um, after our game object here, we're going to say, we're going to create a variable. We're going to call this um, player movement variables and then the first variable is going to be let move forward uh, let move backward backwards uh, let angle and then let movement speed equal to 0 0.5 Okay, cool. okay, so what we have here is move forward. Basically, we just want if if we're moving forward, we move. We enable this. Um, these are going to be booleans. The angle is just what direction our mouse is in, and then movement speed is how fast our player is going to move. And then um to detect input in um a website HTML or JavaScript, we need to um use something called um event an event listener. So we're gonna say window uh dot add. Oh my gosh, add event listener. And we're gonna say key down. So once a certain key is down, and then we're just gonna we're gonna have to create functions for this. But the first one we're gonna say is um, handle. The first one we're gonna create is handle movement press, and then we just copy this, and then handle movement release. Okay, and then this is gonna be key up. Okay, cool. So now we got our our inputs, and now we just gotta create this function. So the first function we're gonna create is um, we're gonna call this enable movement input, and we're gonna call yeah the function what we called it before, which is handle movement press, um, and then um, we're gonna give it the argument of event because it's an event listener. So we're li listening for this event and we're gonna look for let key equal to event dot key code. And then we're gonna say if key is 87 and um, this is the key code for W. I'll have in the link in the description, a link to how to get JavaScript key codes. Or you can just search it up on the internet and then we just say move forward equals to true. And then we just want to copy this and we can also move backwards. So that's going to be what S is for. So else if key is 83, then instead we said move backwards to true. And then let's copy this and we might end up um, um, once we release these keys, we're not going to end up. We always probably will release this key eventually at some point. So once we release it, we want to stop moving forward or backwards. So instead we can just change this to false and change this to false. Okay. So now we have that set up. Now what happens when move forward um, is on or and when move forward is off? Um, we need to go um, up here where, where um, our, okay, okay, okay. We need to go to the components where we have this dot update function. And right before we restore, we want to um, write if type um, equals to grass, then we're going to look if. So we're going to be moving the grass. We're not actually going to be moving the player. So it just looks like the player is moving, but we're just moving the grass. And we're going to say move forward. Um, so it's all just an illusion, but the, the rest of the world is going to move with it as well. And we're just going to say move uh, player. Um, then we're going to say this dot X um, minus equal when we're moving forward. Movement speed um, multiplied by 10 um, multiplied by math dot cos. And then just call this the player angle. Player, player dot angle. So um, we're gonna use the direction of the mouse as our angle. Um, so we're just gonna implement first the movement and then the angle of our 
um, what, what is it called? The angle of our cursor. So um, for the Y, we're not using cos, we're using sin. So this is just some trigonometry to get to the angle. And then we're going to say um, else if move back backwards, then we want to say plus instead. So plus, plus. Okay, cool. So now we have this set up. Um, we can go ahead and actually test this. I've just opened the game file and if we click W, we'll notice that the grass moves. Now it, we can move backwards and forwards and what you'll notice is, I'm gonna go to the end, like just continue walking, there's an end of the grass. So the grass isn't infinite, we just have nine grass blocks. Um, and now we can go back to our code because this works and we tested it. What we want to do is go here and we want to set up the angle of our cursor. So we want our player to always be facing our cursor. So if we go to update game area, um, right before we actually update any game objects, we want to say um, after, I mean, before game context, and we just say um, on mouse moved. So if the direction of our mouse changes, so we're going to say on mouse moved. Um, and we're just going to say on mouse move because that's a function in JavaScript. Then we're going to say function um, E. And that's just going to be the parameter of the function. And we're going to say find players rotation. And we're going to say let rect um, equal to game area dot canvas dot get um, bounding client rect. So we want we want to get our canvas size because that's how we're gonna um, determine the direction that our I mean the position of our mouse. And we're gonna say angle equals to math dot a tan two, and then just take the e dot client y. So yeah, right here we're just getting our canvases y, um, and then minus rect dot top so this is the highest position of our um what is it called of our canvas minus um and then we have to get our player dot y because we also want to take our player into consideration when we're um finding this value and then um we also have to minus by 150 divided by two um because there's some offsetting in our player so if your um player is in the middle you don't have to do this minus 150 divided by two and then we're going to say e dot client um, x minus rect dot left um, minus player dot x minus 250 divided by 2. So um, now we can go ahead semicolon and then just set player dot angle to equal to angle and save that. And then changes from 250 to 256 and then add a bracket here because this is a function. Now let's go ahead and test this. Um, now we notice that our player is facing and we can move in the direction that we want to. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and turn on post notifications and subscribe so you don't miss the next video where, as you can see, we have a problem. Our grass isn't infinite. So that's what we're going to be adding in our next video, making the grass part of the game infinite. So see you in that one. Peace.